Hello! Do you remember the little King Kong ET100? Really nice uh, 100mm quad, which I thought was going to be too big to fly indoors, but did really well and is reasonably good outdoors. It's got the power anyway. One really weird thing about this is that the ESCs, because it's brushless of course, supported D-Shot, but the flight controller it kind of tried to support D-Shot but couldn't. Basically, if you set it D-Shot 600, three of the motors would spin up and one wouldn't, and that's not so usable in a quad. Now, I thought I was going to sort of go through and like, uh, let's let's try soldering the bits about to actually make this work. But in Big Flight 3.3, there was a fix for it, and now you can make it run D-Shot. So the reason I wanted to run D-Shot was I thought this is an ideal little quad for actually being able to use turtle mode well and to do that you have to have D-Shot. So I thought I'd run through what needs to be done to this quad in order to run turtle mode uh, and that's the same for any quad. You need D-Shot and then you have to upgrade bits and pieces. And I also wanted to talk about turtle mode in general, why it's good sometimes and it's not good other times. So uh, reasons you might want to use it but also when you might not want to use it. But we'll come to that in a minute. For now let's get this guy uh, get the top off so I can plug in and we'll go through the software updates we need to do before we actually go ahead and uh, configure turtle mode and then we'll look at how that's done. Both the BL Heli and Betaflight configurators are now standalone applications. I'm going to assume most people know where Betaflight is but in case you don't know where the BL Heli configurator is it's here and I'll include both the URLs in the description below. And I've just connected the ET100 so let's connect to that in the program and it will say some sensible advice about making sure we've taken the propellers off and then connect the power. Yeah, so because this reads the ESCs, we need power to do so. If you try and do it without it, nothing will happen, it will just fail. So let's plug in and then we should be able to click on read setup and there you go. So we can see we're running, this is the version of the firmware, well this is the name of the firmware, this is the version of the firmware 16.5 which isn't enough, we need to be running at least I think it's 16.67 um, and I think it's always worth taking a screenshot of these so if anything seems to go weird you can always refer back to it. So what I'm going to do now is flash the firmware, I'm just going to flash it with the latest. So this is 16.7 so 16.67 is the lowest you need but it's much easier to go with the the latest. I missed this button, flash all, that's what I wanted to do. I thought there was a button somewhere missed it completely. Let's do that again. Alright, so it's flashing the one that's already flashed, but you get the idea. That's pretty straightforward, and all the rest of the parameters look like they've been kept. BL Haley's pretty good at this one, so what I'm going to do now is unplug the battery, and I'm going to disconnect, get rid of that, and I've got beta flight just waiting for it, so let's connect in. Now, as far as speed of flight goes, you'd like to think that this backup and restore thing actually works, but it, it does not seem to. So, before I do anything on this one, I'm going to do the dump command. And that will basically get all the settings, and I'm going to say save that to file, and let's call it ET100 pre-free-free, so I know what it is. What I'm also going to do is, again, for extra security. I'm going to take screenshots of each of the pages and it's just so I know exactly what was set up just in case something goes wrong with the restore. So if we check our version we're running Pico Blocks 316, pretty old. Pico Blocks is another one of these things where they've actually changed the name of it. So if we go into the firmware flasher and we actually choose Pico Blocks you'll notice the firmware version only actually goes up to 317 that's because the name has changed to FF Picker Block. So let's go to the latest stable, which is 331, and let's see if this is going to want to flash the first time. Well, let's load the firmware first, that would help us, wouldn't it? So let's go and flash it. No response. So I've never actually tried flashing this one. I've flashed other Pico Block sorts before. So I'm going to try connecting to it with the bootloader button pressed. Let's see if that's any better. Yeah, that looks better. 
Okay, that looks good for a starter, so let's connect to that. Now, of course, what we usually have done is we've lost all our settings. Yeah, this is default to brushed. All our modes should be gone. So if we go back to the CLI now, what I've just done is open that previous dump as a text file. If you have a look here, all I'm going to do is basically grab hold of this and I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to paste it into here and hit return. So what that's doing is essentially putting all those dump things back in again. Now sometimes there'll be a bunch of things that now won't work and that'll be invalid or something like this stuff here is invalid name because some things change around and that's kind of the reason I do the screenshot just in case. Uh, generally speaking though it, it seems to go in right. So I'm going to do a save here. So let's reconnect. So ports are fine. That's back to multi-shot. Oh the modes didn't go back in. That's interesting. So I've got a few things to pop back in. But the main thing I want to check is see if D-Shot actually works now. So if we go to the configuration, we go to D-Shot 600. And we're going to go ahead and save and reboot that. Reconnect in. Go to the Mertz tab. We understand the risks. Plug in a battery. And what I'm then going to do is test each motor in sequence just to make sure it spins up. Number one is fine, two fine, three is fine, four is fine, all of them fine. So the next thing I want to double check is if my receiver is okay, as I saw a couple of things about SBUS receivers having a problem with this new fix. So I'm just going to plug in again. On the receiver tab, we've got nothing happening. Not to worry, a potential known issue, this one. So if we go to the CLI and we type set serial RX inverted equals off, and then let's save that, reconnect, go to receiver, that's better. Yes, yeah, some of this is right, some of this is wrong. I didn't set up a file safe at all. Right, yeah, air mode on, I'm just checking my radio setup to see if I changed it. It's kind of an addition on aux 2, so it's armed there, and then goes into air mode there. Right, so we now need a switch for flip over crash. So if we add one in on have aux 3, all right, so we got my aux 3 there. So yeah, that should be it. I've set a range for flip over crash. Okay, so let's say we've got... Um, our little thing, we're hovering around and it's all going okay. So what I've got with this, I, this is my arm switch, this is my flip over switch. So what I'm going to do is, is make it flip first, let's arm it, let's roll it over. Oh no, it's upside down. What are we going to do? Right. So the first thing we do is disarm. The next thing we do is put it in flip over to crash, flip over or turtle mode. Then we arm it. And then what you want to do is give it a little quick shove on one side. Just to do that. After that, we need to disarm it, come out of turtle mode. We can then rearm it. And we should be able to take off again. So let's try to go the other way. Again, disarm, turtle mode, arm. You see, you just need to do a little blip, else it'll go too far. It's quite vicious sometimes. Disarm, out of turtle mode, rearm. Off and running. So I'm going to try that in the FPV goggles, see how it goes. Right, I've got my goggles on my head. I'm going to try and hold this in front of the camera, but I can't really see. So Manual. we're in self level at the moment. Oh. So let's see if we can go and ditch it somewhere. Oh. I wonder if we can fall over this chair leg somehow. Yay, I'm upside down. Right, so I'm going to disarm. I'm going to put into turtle mode. Rearm. So 
So I'm going to give it a flip. And we're up. So, disarm. Back out of turtle mode. Rearm. Let's him fly back to me. So in my excitement to test that and show you what I was doing, I actually forgot to mention that when you you'd go into uh, disarm, you'd switch turtle mode on, you'd go back to arm. The thing I forgot to mention is, yeah, I mentioned that you need to use this stick to flip it, but basically all the other stick movements do nothing. So doing that, doing that, nothing. Basically only your roll stick will have an actual input and go one way or the other. That is setting up turtle mode and using it on the little ET100. Now the reason um, I mentioned that this was particularly suitable because the um, props are all enclosed and I know I'm generally going to be flying this indoors so when it's upside down nothing bad is ever going to happen. I'm pretty confident I'll always be able to flip it over um, and it's not going to have any hassle. Now I said I'd come back and mention uh, turtle mode in general and that's what I want to do now because obviously this is a little uh, well, indoor outdoor quad, it depends. But a lot of people are obviously using turtle mode on, on your 5 inch, like this one. And this is where my word of warning comes in. Because these don't have enclosed props, so when you're upside down this, there is a good chance that your prop will foul on something. Now, this is a, a pretty good one. Ones where you've got a big stack like this, they generally, if you've got a flat surface you, you crash on, it will generally go like that. So you just need to make sure you go up that side and you can flip straight over without doing anything. Of course, often you haven't crashed in a perfect situation and you only have the view through your goggles, which could just be some grass. So one thing you don't want to do with turtle mode is keep doing it. It's like, give it a quick blast. If nothing happens, you don't want to keep doing it because all the time these props are unable to turn and you're putting power into them uh, is going to stress the ESCs and the motors and you, you don't want to smoke them. So yeah, by all means, put turtle mode on something like this, but just be careful when you use it, that you're in the right situation and don't, you know, just sit there for 10 minutes going, come on, come on, something happened. And the way I'd advise getting used to turtle mode is much like I did with the ET100, except not inside. So if you do it on your five inch, uh, turn it over, get line of sight, do it in a, a, a place outside that you can control it and practice seeing how much input you need to give. Because the blades are spinning, basically, generating thrust upside down. It's not very efficient, so it's not a progressive thing. So it's kind of a little blast and see how much it goes. And you'll kind of need to get used to it. As soon as you can do it line of sight, move to the goggles and get used to knowing, depending which way up, which direction you have to push in to do it. Um, and you'll get to hang it in no time. So even if you're not using it to flip over from a crash position, because your field's like mine, you've got horrendously long grass, getting stuck up a tree in that, when all you've got is, you know, all props going forward, it's quite useful to be able to put it in turtle mode. Even if you're up the right way, you can sort of thrust downwards in certain ways and that can really help you. The other thing to be aware of is, is when you crash, sometimes things come off. So it might be the fact that, yeah, you've crashed, you can turtle mode yourself back and take off. And then when you come into land later, you might say, well, that's weird. I'm sure I had a GoPro on that earlier, which may have come off in the earlier crash. So be confident you know that stuff's staying on and you, you know where it was if you have to go back and check that out. Be also aware that you're quite likely to damage props by using tunnel modes. Um, either when you're trying to thrust and you're hitting stuff or you're just basically going over and pivoting on these props can take the ends up. I was trying to get some footage before of this little Diatone GTR 90 and trying to get some freeze frames to, to use in sequence which didn't work out. Uh, this is what it looks like in slow-mo. But even just doing this a couple of times, I had little nicks out of the props, so it's quite easy to damage it. So, you know, just be aware that you will most likely knacker up your props, but, you know, props are props. This is something you're going to swap out. But as long as you take that all on board, it's a great mode, and there's no reason not to put it on as long as you're running D-Shop. It just takes a little, probably, uh, an upgrade of BR Heli. I've not seen any ready to fly quads come in yet where BL Heli has been at the right version. So it, it seems like something you'll always need to update, but you can just put the uh, the program on, connect to it and see anyway, and see what you need to do. But upgrading the firmware is generally no, no hassle at all. 
Anyway, I hope that was useful. I'm going to go fly this round and deliberately turn it upside down a bit more, just because it's fun to do so. And I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.